It's a good idea to wear some eye protection when you're doing any of this as well as some gloves. And things can be under pressure and get in your eye. Common sense isn't so common anymore. That's why I gotta say it. Brian's Mobile One. Rick sounds good from here. But I'm getting a lot of squeaking coming from this side. A look at the odometer says we're not quite 300,000 miles. We're getting close. That squeak drives me crazy. One thing that I notice immediately is that everything's quiet. I don't have a squeaking, chirping Subaru anymore. This video is brought to you in parts by, by autoparts.com. They provided the compressor. Uh, they've got fast free shipping. Uh, there wasn't a core charge mentioned or involved that I saw. Um, the next time you need a replacement part, I would check these guys out and just do the math. Check it out, see if it's a good deal for you. You may be doing yourself a favor to the tune of $220. That's worth five minutes of your time to check them out. They specialize in air conditioning stuff. So let's do this. That's the AC compressor. That's the high side port that you see right here. The low side port is right there. So I'm going to hook up some AC gauges and get the old refrigerant pulled out. In order to do that, I'm going to use an evacuation pump, an old R134 cylinder, and then a set of gauges with an extra yellow hose. The pressures will equalize somewhere between 65 PSI is a lower end of the spectrum, and 125 PSI is a higher. And the hotter it is outside, the more it's going to be a higher pressure. I do this in two stages because I don't have a fancy valve that allows it to free flow at first. If you run it through your evacuation pump the way that it is, it basically pushes a bunch of the uh, lubricant into crazy places and it just doesn't work as well. I'm going to open these wide up and I'm going to cause these to become the same pressure. Basically the high side and low side are the same pressure. They're going through this and this is going to equalize. It's not going to drain all of it out. It's just going to come down to a certain level so you have equilibrium. At that point I close everything. I put this hose onto the evacuation pump and then I put the uh, other hose from the evacuation pump output into this and then just push the rest of it out. But anyway that's pulled most everything out. You don't want to pull too much vacuum at this point here. And the reason why is if you have a bunch of vacuum and you pull the lines off and you're dirty or dusty, you can suck dirt into the system. And we cap both of these off. So both of our sources are closed. And here the pump kind of regulate. Turn that off. I'm going to lose a little bit from the hose here. That's just part of it. You save most of it, but you can't save all of it. It's just like the starfishes thing with the starfish on the beach. You do what you can, you do the best you can, and that's all you can do. The nice thing about the brake clean is that it evaporates and gets out of the way really quickly. millimeter for the battery as well as the cover you don't got to pull it all the way off but you do need to get it far enough out of the way that it doesn't swing back into position if it does this positive cap on the lead wire for the alternator or feed wire is going to make a spark if it's touching anything the only thing I'm not replacing here is the belt uh, the belt's still in good shape, fortunately. There's a 12 millimeter here, and it's secured on the back side. I love these Subarus and Toyotas. They make it so easy with consistent fasteners. Apparently this one's been abused a little bit. And as I look at this, I can see that there's some damage to the alternator belt, so it's a good thing I'm doing this. I wonder what happened there. Looks like I took on a rock or something somewhere. Can't imagine where that would have happened. Check out this belt damage here. This belt's in pretty good shape and then there's this one little place that says, I'm tired. 
Because the old bolt broke on this, I'm going to have to go to my parts bin and get another M8 by 125. So you've got a bracket that goes on here for the tensioner pulley. When I went to take the bolt out of the top part of it, it just snapped off upon coming undone. So I cross uh, cut it with a Dremel and then tried to use a screwdriver, didn't work. Heated it with a torch, you'll see some melt marks. That didn't work, so then I took a nut and I put the nut over it and then I uh, used my MIG welder and I welded the inside of the nut. That does two things, that heats it up and then it also it causes you to have something that you can grab it with to undo it. So that snapped off. As you can see it welded to the uh, what was left of the bolt pretty well. You can see where I had cut it and notched it. But it snapped more of the bolt off. So not only did this snap, but the part I welded to snapped. And I did it again, and I used one with a little bit more reach, and it snapped more of that bolt off. So at that point, I was like, man, I'm just going to hit up eBay or the wrecking yard and just get a new bracket. I'm glad I did because I want something that's going to be clean and nice like this. So ultimately what I did to have a reliable car is I welded a little button there. I have to put that in the vise and hit it with a chisel. Not bad, just took a few hits. So I'm going to check my bolt, make sure it fits in there. Probably be best if I hit that with a chainsaw file or something to open it up a little bit. These are just some still chainsaw files. I'll put a link in the description for those. I use these all the time, just never for chainsaws. But it's a nice round file to where you can just ream something out like a bolt hole. Remember this had such hang-ups before. Probably. Now it's just clean and nice. You don't have to mess up all the threads of this going into the uh, soft metal of the bracket. See here, this is not an exact match, but at least you have enough bolt in there to get the job done. And the length and pitch and all the rest of that's good. Plus it has a built-in washer to spread the force out evenly. We can take the belt off. There's no tension or, or tension on it. Just go through and pop our lines off. So you want to grab the little flag or tab for the alternator bracket on the back side. If you fail to do that, it's going to fall back in there. I'm just going to put these together. Throttle cable's getting kind of sketchy, isn't it? I'm going to clear this completely so I don't ding up my intercooler. It's tempting to set things on the intercooler. I don't mind setting a belt on it, but an alternator, that's crossing the line. Okay, so we've got... And things can be under pressure and get in your eye. I'd say we had an excess of oil in the compressor that was blocking our evacuation job. So right off the bat, I'm going to take some of this paper towel, wrap the uh, connector up in it, try to keep it as clean as we can, and I'm basically just going to stuff it somewhere safe, point it in the down direction, of course, so that things don't dislodge and fall into it. Gravity tends to influence everything down, right? So we got to pull this bolt, the bolt back here, and these two, and we'll have the compressor out with the bracket. It's nice to have these kinds of options, isn't it? I pull it out so it's on the wobble hang part. That way I get the angle that I need. Move in through here, come around the top. Now that bolt snapped off the front of this. Hopefully I don't have one snap off in the block. Sounds terrible, but I think I got it. <laughs> it was so hard and then it just gave up. Forrest Gump was right. You don't know what you're going to get. <sighs> Sometimes using an impact can be a good way to get these free too. Just to be safe, I'm going to spray the remaining two bolts. Did I say two? I meant six. Sometimes the shock from an impact can be enough to break it without breaking the bolt. So be sure to check and compare the lengths on your bolts as they come out. Not just on this car, but whatever car you're working on. It can make all the difference between breaking through an engine block or a timing cover or something and not. Because if you put a long bolt in a short bolt, those threads are going to hold well enough and shove well enough to create all kinds of damage. So we've got this bolt here. Try to stay in the tripod, but 
The other one's clear back behind there. This one's been pulled, that's an auxiliary bracket. So I just have this one, so I'm gonna crack that by hand. This is one end of the engine block, so I wanna make sure I crack that properly. I'm gonna go with a breaker bar on that. Sometimes a slow motion allows the malleability of the bolt to twist off. So if you can really grab onto it and get a good shock on it, like I say, sometimes that'll break the corrosion before the bolt gets a chance to shear. It's a nice sharp thing. It's not karate, but it seems like it some days. See the compressor move there? And again, I'm going to verify that this bolt, I'm not going to assume, I'm going to verify that it's the same length as the rest. Now that the compressor's off the vehicle, let's do this on the bench. Get on top! As you might imagine, they were really stuck when they first came off. I don't know if I mentioned, but it's really hot today. <laughs> really excited to get the AC done. I just pull these up and just set them right to the side, especially if I was to be reusing the bracket. In this case, I'm not, but it doesn't matter. As I pull it off, I compare everything on each compressor. If we line these up, we want to verify that our pulleys line up, that we've got the same alignment. Uh, here and here and the same alignment here to here the same stick out if this is a slightly different design than this it doesn't matter it's not critical but the belt does need to line up in the correct place and you can see the plug has a little tab on this side and one here you can cut a wire I mean this is basically just a single wire here you can cut the wire and splice in whatever one you need to you can see that the ground wire is connected here and then a positive wire you just have two but just make sure they're the same the only difference i can see between these is this has a dimple in it and this doesn't so no big deal so i'm going to leave these in place the caps so that when i'm moving things around i don't have any dirt or contamination get in there well the old bracket as i said was totally unsalvageable because the bolt was just helplessly hopelessly totally stuck in there so this just bolts up the same as the other one this goes here before all these go in I'm gonna be using some anti-seize I'm gonna go like this as it goes down the hole it's gonna do the same thing to the hole this one goes here anytime you have steel into aluminum and especially if you do it or the roads are salted or they use some other kind of chemical compound uh, things can really really get stuck together with dissimilar metals but you want to be able to get it undone that's why we're doing the precaution of putting anti-seize on it it's fun to paint your valve covers but it's also fun to spend time with your kids <laughs> or go flying or whatever so you got to ask yourself what do I value more flying or spending time with my kids or painting everything to make it pretty you know what my answer is nice thing about using a torque wrench is you don't have to worry about the feel of it you can just set it and forget it if you over torque this, you can strip the hole. If you under torque it, it can come undone. Either one, not good. If you torque through something that's skinny on an extension, it can mess up your torque because these will actually work like a spring, like a torsion bar. There we go. So that's the way that'll go in. Let's do it. And yeah, this makes it so much easier going in too. Once you get a couple of them in, it kind of lines the rest of them up. That's why I'm doing the one in the back side last. I like to add oil to the low side hose before evacuating. Um, if you put the oil in your manifold hose, then you're just going to be sucking a bunch of uh, humidity and air into the system. This way you've got a bunch of oil right on deck in the low hose going in. Just spill a little bit, get it to follow down the o-ring. I don't smear it with my finger like I would with most things because this stuff has to stay clean. Ooh, so slick, so pretty. And again, I just wiggle this until the bolt lines up. 
Try to have that be as neutral as possible and let the bolt hold up. Good defense for leaks. Again with the oil. It's going to drizzle it into the high side. Now your tensioner bolt is limited to an arc, so it'll pretty well line up for you. Remember your AC belt has to go on first before your alternator belt because it's stacked behind it. We've got all kinds of family and friends that do Subaru. Now you'll notice that this lines up in the slot there, so if you were to put it crossways to that, it would stick out too far and you'd have problems. So make sure that seats properly. So the top run is the longest run on this belt, so if you turn it 90 degrees, if it goes past that, that's bad. So go ahead and hold it past that, and tighten it down until the belt pulls to about 90 degrees or a little less than 90 degrees or one quarter turn. So the belt's supposed to go this way, you're holding it a little bit past, you tighten it until it goes just a little bit there, and then stop. You're done. Then we go back and tighten the nut that goes on the pulley and that'll secure it in place and keep our tension right there. Past 90 degrees without a great deal of force then it's too loose. If you can't make it to about 90 degrees with a moderate amount of force then you're too loose. So that's the way to get it right the first time every time. Let's set it to tighten. I'm just going to pull it up to where it's close and set it just gently, but not too slow. And I'm going to do the same thing on this one. I'm going to find my longest run. In this case it's kind of a tie, but I'm going to use the one that's easy to get to here. Right about there is perfect. Now if you wanted to do just the clutch on this, as I mentioned, we didn't need to do the whole AC compressor, but it's good to do it just because the cost difference and labor and all that. Just catch it, because if it's worn out, your compressor's probably worn out too, because every time that clutch has been engaged, the compressor's been engaged as well. Half the time the compressor's bad, the other half it's the clutch. So if you've worn it one out and it's had all the same experience, like I say, it's best to just replace the whole thing, in my experience. So we've got everything packed up and we are pumping out any air or moisture in there. When you pump it down to an extreme vacuum, like 26 inches of mercury, it causes everything to evaporate and pull out, whether it's close to the top or not. Looking at my receiver dryer, you can see that it's bonded, welded, soldered, whatever to the condenser, so I'm going to have to replace that either by doing the packet inside or the whole condenser. I'm going to do the whole condenser in the next little while, partly because of that line of white paint down the bottom, partly because of the damage to the fins from all the off-road driving and freeway driving that's impaled it. But uh, I'm not going to go without air conditioning for the month or two that it's going to take between the two. So when you look here, uh, this is what I'm going to be putting into it, about, about half a kilogram or 1.1 pounds basically. You can see it's pulling down some serious needle pegging vacuum that gets all the water in the crud and air out of the system. So this is my system, you turn it on, you don't want to swing the tank very much. Of course it'd be nice if I had like a Robin Air AC cart, I would love that. Had one at the dealership, it was great. But uh, this suffices. So I'm at 15 kilograms, 0.165, and I need to have about half a kilogram into the car. Now as it is, you see that it's inverted, you see that this is, uh, the valve is open, and I've got my gauges hanging. So let me show you a little trick. If you look closely, I've got this little uh, cap here pull the cap off and then you can use a screwdriver or your fingernail or something and you basically get a little there's air that comes through first but then refrigerant comes out that's air you see how much air came out before the refrigerant came out that's air that could have all kinds of junk in it as soon as I disconnect from my evacuation pump uh, immediately any moisture humidity or air rushes into the line 
So that's how you purge it so that when I open the low side valve, it's immediately going to get refrigerant. Uh, this line's still holding vacuum. So let's charge it. So I've got my exhaust hose running outside. You have to have the engine running to get the AC compressor to turn. We'll fire it up. It's one of those times it's nice having an automatic. So we've got this set to recirc. We're going to turn the radio off so we don't copyright bullcrap. Full blast. Okay, so I'm going to open the valve. And as soon as that gets pressure, you're going to see that cycle like that. Then all eyes pretty much just stay here and watch it till it says so we started at 15, 150. So 15 from 50 is 35, 35 from 100 is 65, so I need to go another 20. And this is automatic shut off, so I'm probably going to have to reset it twice. Actually, this is slurping it down fast. Safety plastic back on. So they give you a margin to stay between. I think we're right in the middle there. Cool, we're done. Let's see how the AC works. One thing that I notice immediately is that everything's quiet. I don't have a squeaking, chirping Subaru anymore. You know, a lot of Subarus will chirp just a little bit. They got that little chirp sound to the engine. But every time I had the AC cycle off in the past, it was so noisy. See, it would be squeaking and chirping and barking. I don't like the way the clutch is dragging. It probably needs to break in. But it's nice and quiet now. Sweet. Thanks by autoparts.com. Appreciate it. Bonus footage at the end.